and welcome to another episode of More Than Dice. I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Kathy. And welcome to episode 188. <coughs> Today we're going to be talking about, Jesse's going to be talking about, of course, uh, Gen Con. We're going to go over some of the Asmodee news that came out, and John has some uh, GW news that I'd like to hear about a little bit um, that came out. <laughs> well, that's a bold statement. <laughs> you want to hear that from me? Okay. Yep. <laughs> Other than that, um, we'll just get through the bits. We also we want to thank, make sure that you check out Muse on Minis. Um, and if there's any type of widgets or things that you need, or terrain, they have some really good, um, uh, like infinity style sci fi terrain uh, you can get from them. Uh, and if you use the die, if you use the code more than dice, all one word, <laughs> we will, you can uh, get 10% of everything you order. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Um, other than that, um, guys, we want to make sure that everybody is safe out there. Please wear your mask. Please get vaccinated. Please be safe so we can all see you at HugCon 2022, um, a.k.a. Adepticon. Um, other than that, uh, John, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, I have uh, salted caramel whiskey with uh, cream soda. Okay. Kathy, oh, what are you drinking? That sounds delicious. It is. I want I want what John has. I'm out of cream soda. Sorry. Mm. Well, I have a gin and tonic, and I also have jasmine tea. Oh, well, I also have water, but mm, I also have water. <laughs> Important to stay hydrated, or so my friends keep telling me over and over. I am having just some Maker's Mark today. Since I'm totally off all my meds and feeling kind of decent, I can actually have something to drink. So. Oh, Marshall, I really thought your wife was going to get very, very upset when she saw the cherry moonshine. Oh, holy shit. Oh, that's a long story. And I need to make sure Bowie is in the chat room before I could tell that. But let's continue. Um, do we have any shout outs this week? Uh, well, one from last week that... Uh, Legionnaires had uh, sent my way. Uh, he tried to remember it last week, but couldn't. It was uh, Sir Clive Sinclair, who is one of the early fathers of computing, basically. I don't know a lot about him. I haven't heard of him, but a quick uh, search shows that he was like an early innovator in computers and such from from England. So he passed last week. And I don't have anyone from this week. I didn't have anybody from this week either. I was like, I didn't know. So I was kind of curious. <clears throat> like I said, guys, please take care of yourself. Please um, wear your mask. Do all that stuff. Get you vaccinated. And let's uh, have, like, a good time. Cheers. 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 Oh, Kathy. Mm. The straight cream soda mix is better than the vanilla cream soda. I was surprised. Probably allows oh. the uh, flavors of the whiskey to come forward a bit. Yes. So, uh, also, if you notice something wrong with the video or audio, please let us know so we can kind of fix that. Uh, we, I got a new machine, so we're trying to figure out all the stuff to make sure it works on. Um, the stream as we're live on video. I guess we got some of that figured out. Okay, good. Thanks, Al Marshall. I think it's just switching around with all the things going on. But if something happens, something goes wrong on, on an individual scene, let us know. Uh, tell us what you think about the new color scheme and everything also. We would appreciate that too. Um, so let's go with Kathy. Kathy, you were gone last week. You missed a really good stream on uh, heavy gear and some models. And I got some new models in. Uh, I got their new one. Um, other than that, technically, I did watch part of it. Yeah, but you weren't. Here. I tuned in a little. I was, I was at home. Uh, by the time it started, and but I was exhausted. Um, <laughs> Mizzy actually reminded me that we forgot somebody, um, which was um. The guy that played Mozzie on White Collar. I can't remember. Neil, um, what's his name? 
Oh, man. You're going to have to double up because I don't know what White Collar is. Oh, no, is. I've never watched it. Oh, White Collar is a great TV show, by the way. Um, what was his name? I got a bug in my face. Oh, it's killing me now. Who is it? Um... Willie Garson, sorry, Willie Garson. He he was also like in Sex in the City and a couple of other things. Uh, he was really good. He was really, 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 really good in uh, White Collar. It's where I, you know, fell in love with him as a, as an actor because it was doing a lot of stuff. He's done some other things. He's done some voice acting and everything, but we did forget about him. So sorry. Um, all right, sorry. Go ahead, Kathy. Gen Con. Uh, so, as everybody knows, Gen Con is the best four days in gaming. That's their slogan. And this year it was later than it normally is. And, uh, yeah, I didn't plan on going. If if you'll recall, anytime people asked, they was like, no, I'm not going this year. We're not doing any conventions. But my friend Jen was like, well, we... We have a room. Uh, our friend asked us to be there for this event, and we have a room. And so, do you want to come stay with us? So I was like, uh, okay. And that was like a, a month before. So, and then she said, we're not going down ahead. Of, I'm used to going there because I've always usually worked Gen Con in some capacity and I'm used to going down on like Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday and and staying like until the next Monday but instead this year we we left on Friday we actually left we left later than we intended to on Friday because when I went to go to Jen's my car wouldn't start and they had to call AAA and get a new battery. <laughs> so, uh, yay. So that was a couple of hours later. But the, the miracle of that, let me just tell you, this has nothing to do with gaming. But <laughs> the gods were clearly with me and wanted me to be at Gen Con because I called AAA. Five minutes after I, I well, they were busy. So they're like, try this text, whatever. So I did the text thing and arranged the the thing. And five minutes later, I get a call from this guy. He's like, you got, you ordered AAA? And I'm like, I'm like 20 minutes from you. It's like, no way. Nice. This never happens with AAA. You know this. It's usually like an hour, two hours, four hours, whatever. You know? 20 minutes later, he was there, and he was, he was testing the battery and the alternator and the starter and everything, and he's like, yeah, your battery is pretty much toast. I'm like, is, is this something that you can help me with, the, you know, the battery, getting it replaced? And he's like, well, they do send us out with some batteries, but it's not 100% that we would have the one that you need for your car. And... uh so he's like, well, I'll check. So he calls them up to find out what, what it is that, that he's got. And it turns out he has my car battery. <laughs> Pops it in there, starts it up. I'm on my way. And, Sounds uh, good. Yeah, it was fantastic. So we get there and then we, we take off. And and we, we stopped at Someplace in Indiana. I don't even know. Some cheese place. They have like cheese and meat and sandwiches. And, and it's a convenience store gas station. Roadside stop. And we just got all kinds of. <laughs> we got M&M's. We got like three different kinds of cheese. We got crackers. We got tortilla chips. We got dip. We got beef jerky because what's a road trip without beef jerky? We just just all this crap, <laughs> all this crap food, and it it stayed up in our uh, 
up in our room and we just like snacked on it for the the weekend. But anyway, so this was Friday. We get there Friday evening. Uh, the exhibitors hall is already closed. It's just closing as we're, you know, getting to the convention center itself after checking into our hotel room. And so we get to see none of that. So we're like, well, where do we want to eat dinner? And, you know, met up with Jen's brother and some other friends. And, you know, everybody's masked. Everybody's masked all over. Well, outside, not everybody. Outside, not everybody's masked. Which was weird because they weren't all exercising the social distancing that you would have liked to see. Uh, but we get to the Ram, which is not the Ram anymore. The Ram closed. And it's now a place called Goodwood. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? John's out of here. He's gone. <laughs> I kid you not. I'm like, well, okay, so it is not the Ram anymore. It's Goodwood. Right. The Ram has become Goodwood. <laughs> hey, Xander. I can't do anything you make those that easy. Come on. Make me work I, I'm not bit. the one who made it that easy. Hey. Can at least make was, me work for that shit a little bit. It was fantastic. They have a t shirt in there that so, says something about just the tip, but I don't know what. So you're telling me that Goodwood was fantastic. Is that it what I'm was. hearing? It was. Okay. It was. Noted. Mm. They have some fantastic tater tots. But I do like tots. I know, I know. Uh, let's see, what did I, oh, they had this brisket something. It was like, it was like a fake Reuben. So, instead of, instead of rye bread with, with Swiss cheese and sauerkraut and maybe a little Thousand Island and some corned beef, that's a Reuben. Yeah. This was smoked brisket. Still good. Love me some brisket. Doesn't matter how it's prepared generally. I mean, if it's prepared right. But the toast was just white bread. It was like Texas toast. Well, I mean, Texas toast okay then. Which is, yeah, it's still good. It was a delicious sandwich and I ate all of it right away. Reuben is my favorite sandwich though. If I'm going for a hot sandwich, Reuben is my favorite. And this was, this was good. It was still good. I mean, did it have sauerkraut on it? It had pickled cabbage, which, I mean, duh, that's sauerkraut. I don't know what they, like, uh, are they afraid to, they, they're going to scare somebody away by saying sauerkraut? Not necessarily the same thing, but yeah, fair enough. I hate sauerkraut. Marshall hates sauerkraut. We had this discussion on Saturday. That's funny. <laughs> Benian says a Cuban. Is that what it is? Is it a Cuban? No, that Cuban way? doesn't have sauerkraut. They that's, wouldn't put that's sauerkraut That's not on what show. I... That's not what it was called, though. I don't even know what it was called. Smoked brisket. I just... The menu had nerd, nerdy names for everything on it in honor of Gen Con. So... Well, at least they're keeping the tradition alive. Yeah, yeah. At any rate. At any was, rate. The food was good. Friends were good. And I ended up running into several other people while I was there which is unusual at Gen Con. You know, you wouldn't you would think 30,000 people is a lot, but compared to 70,000 people, I never ran into my friends at Gen Con unless we planned to meet somewhere. I never accidentally ran into them ever. I've run into people at conventions all people. the time. It's weird. But, I mean, specifically Gen Con. Other conventions, I run into people all the time. But 70,000 people means, you know, there's a Less lot more chances. bodies in between. So here I am at the not ram, at the fake ram. And uh, across the room, I see one of the people that I played D&D with, in, well, when we were playing in person. I'm like, oh, hey. Some That's other friends. Awesome. Yeah, just a bunch of people I knew. 
and I didn't expect that. It was cool. Um, yeah, this is it's it's I'm packing all of this stuff in all of these needless details in because I don't really have that much of gaming stuff to say about it because I spent all of three hours in the exhibitors hall on Saturday. <clears throat> we went there, we walked through. It was smaller than it has been, which we knew. We knew that was going to be the case. Uh, there were less people in there, but it was still crowded. But everyone was masked because every place that was a Gen Con event area, which includes the entire convention center, you had to be wearing a mask or they would eject you. Good. If you, if you complained and caused a kerfuffle about wearing a mask, you're out of there. You're out, they would pull your badge and you're gone. Good. Go ahead. They need to be serious about it. It's people's health. So, yeah. Yeah. I, and I thought that, that was great. And I don't think I saw anybody inside the convention center that didn't have a mask on. That's double awesome. So people were, people were being careful. Um, I did, I did hug some people. Well, as did, long as they're willing, it's okay. You know, and, and well, yeah, I'm not going to just jump on them. I mean, uh, unless they're willing. So, so I didn't, I didn't see a ton in the dealer's room. I, there wasn't much that grabbed me. I did see the, the conquest booth. I saw Parabellum Games there. They had their booth. They were there. Uh, they were doing demos. I didn't do any demos this year. Usually, I go through the list of vendors ahead of time and plan out places that I want to stop. And and I didn't do that this year. So I didn't, I didn't have any plan of attack. And I was I was with my friends. And, you know, I didn't want them to be stopping to wait for me at places. So I didn't. I didn't get that same exhibitor hall experience. There were no demo games, and I don't think I would have wanted to play any. I didn't want to be touching stuff that other people have been touching. You know yeah, what I gets, mean? Yeah, it gets a little weird. Then you're like, e -e -e, do I want to? Do I not? So I saw I saw Wander there. I saw Panacult Games. They were actually they weren't promoting Wander. They were promoting Shovel Knight, which is their their newest property. Gotcha. Yep. Yep. And I think there's a there's a another wander game or an expansion that's in the works too. So I'm excited for that. Um, and it was good to see them. I'm thinking, what else in the in the exhibitors hall did I was of interest to me? Not. A ton. Impact Miniatures was there, which was good to see. My friends at Armored Wolf Studio, the leather workers, were there. They're all the way down from Alaska. And they made my sweet Nurgle dice bag. <laughs> oh, I need to show you my dice bag, Kathy? I should show you that. I don't think so. Is it Nurgly? Right, well, no, it's not, but it's, it's cool. I got it by... Uh... Someone on Etsy, I want to say Games by B, probably. My sweet Nurgle dice bag. It has tentacles. Mine's actually out in the car, so I can't, because I haven't unloaded it from yesterday. Because I am lazy. <laughs> but I admit that, because I couldn't be arsed. That's fine. What else? What else? Why well, had dinner, well... Took a disco nap in the afternoon because I knew that I was going to be out late because dinner, uh, dinner with friends was was had, and I met new people and yeah, it was great. And I was out until like two thirty again. Friday night is the night that we we stayed up until three o'clock playing Cards Against Humanity in our hotel room. With friends, but 
Saturday was also fun. And then Sunday, it was just quick go to the dealer's room to pick up something that Jen had ordered from somebody. Uh, and then we left. And that was it. It was like Friday night, Saturday, and then left Sunday morning and bam, bam, bam. Done. It was the fastest Gen Con ever, but he had so much fun. I was I was really glad that I went. Awesome. And, uh, yeah. But but yeah, it just it wasn't. Next year they're moving back to their usual, you know. They're always like a late July, early August, and this year it's I think the first weekend in August. Yeah, I saw that they changed I mean, it back. I mean, this coming the... year. Yeah. Twenty twenty two. So, so that's nice. Yes. The, yeah. the more, uh, you know, usual time people are used to. Exactly. Camp. Someone work on model. It was, it was difficult for some people because Origins is this coming week. So, and that's that one is that starts during the week. It's like a, it's not like a weekend thing. It's like a during the week thing. Fair enough. And it's right on the heels of Gen Con. There's like one weekend in between. Yeah, that is a little tough, but I mean, it gets like that. I mean, it's it's been an unprecedented type of time. Yeah, and Origins is normally in the summer in June. So, we should... what did you think of Gen Con different since it was done and everything you think it was just like oh they just tried to get it just to get it done or was it you know was it worth it your time and effort i'm not talking about seeing people because that's a different story but i'm talking about you know gen con as a whole do you think that was worth it to go to i that? didn't i didn't see gen con as a whole though i i i didn't plan it out in the same way that i normally plan out a gen con so I didn't use any of my your your stuff is laggy there. Yeah, I just noticed that. That's crazy. Really laggy too. But yeah, I didn't notice. I mean, there were there were less exhibitors in the exhibitor hall. Uh, the main ones who are normally kind of the, I guess they're the sponsors. You know, ones like. Like uh, Asmody and Come On and Paizo Games, they were not there. And they always have huge spaces in the exhibitor hall and, and tons of events. And they didn't have that this year. So there was room for other smaller exhibitors to come in, which was interesting. It was a, a bit of a different dynamic. Uh, there were artists that usually are stuck in Artist Alley that actually were able to have whole booth spaces in the exhibitors hall, which was really nice. That's cool. So it it was fun to be able to see some of these smaller independent, you know, companies have maybe a little bit more space or or be in the exhibitor hall at all because of some of the people who were not there. So in that way, Joe, I felt like the exhibitor hall was successful. But I didn't I didn't play demos. I didn't I didn't see any of the new up and coming stuff, you know, that you usually see. Where people debut things at Gen Con. Yeah, because uh, I'm sure that there was just like everybody was. Because I know that like one of the rules was you weren't allowed to bring out anything exclusive right. this year, which was an interesting thing that they did. Um, oh, that that's a wise thing. You know why they did that, oh, right? Because yeah. you don't want anybody. You didn't yeah. want lines of people and great big uh, groups of people trying to, you know, herd into the exhibitor hall all at once. Yeah. And they were actually very successful with keeping people from, 
you know, all, you know, crowding together to do that bum rush of the exhibitor hall as soon as mm -hmm. it opens. Yep. To the point where exhibitors, when they didn't see that happen, were worried until, you know, it turns out that it was quite busy for them. Everybody seemed to do well that I talked to. Uh, but they were a little worried at the beginning because there wasn't that onslaught of people right away. Well, I, but I saw someone's video of the entrance of going in, and it was so weird to see that because it was like, you can see the carpet for mm -hmm. miles and there was like nobody really I mean, there was like hardly anybody at the entrance to go and get because when you normally at the beginning your your face is in the person in front of you's backpack oh yeah mm -hmm. you know uh, and 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 you're shoulder to shoulder with people normally and it's just this massive shambling humanity shuffling shuffling through yeah because the, the one time i got to go to gen con i was lucky to get in on the teacher badge which allow you know a, go in an hour early than everybody else which i thought was really cool but uh that was still just even that that was the line for that was huge too just to get in there oh yeah even the exhibitors line went in the morning because we always went in with exhibitors and and there was quite a line and you would get exhibitors that I don't know who they thought they were but they would come <laughs> to the front of that line and exhibitors have an entirely different door that they go into yeah. where they go into the exhibitor hall uh, and these people walk up to the front and they're showing their exhibitor badge and in the 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 people at the door are like, uh, yeah, and everybody else who's in line sh holds up their badge, which says exhibitor. <laughs> like, sorry, pal. Yeah. Go you, get in line like everybody get, else. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I remember whenever I was trying, I was getting in line, there would be people that were like, well, I get in because of this. And I'm like, you have the same badge I do. You go back in line like everybody else. Yep. You're not any better than anybody else because there was a lot of people that were trying to like cut in front of us because i was i was the first one in line waiting for it because i just sat down and chilled and played games with people and they were like no there are like 50 60 people in front of you go back to the back of the line and they're like but i'm uh i'm like yeah this is the line for that go back <laughs> so are line. all the rest of us yeah so are all the rest of us type thing so i was just like uh you're not anything special. Go. Word. So L. Marshall has a hobby question. Go for it. This cloak is way too red. I need to bring it back to crimson. Purple or brown? So I want to know what, what kind of red it is. Do you have a picture you can like, share with us? Is it a is it an orangey red? Or Or is it a, uh, a color yeah. red? Or just post it on Discord and I'll get it to them. Yeah, fire truck red. These are these are the things I need to know before answering that question. Although purple seems like uh, that would be a, a nice way to tone it down. If I'm concerned about red being too bright, I'll mix in a tiny bit of green with my red. But that doesn't help you right now. Unless you want to glaze a little bit of green into the shadows. So that was my answers of Gen Con. Sounds like a great time. <laughs> I think more of it is that you got to see some friends. I think that was uh, the main that kicker. That's really the the whole reason I went this year. Yeah. It was less about the gaming and more about seeing people that I hadn't seen in so long. Yeah, because there was like, I checked out like the events and I'm like, man, there's like really no, no miniature events pretty much. 
Mm-mm. No, there was there was a couple people that were teaching classes there. Yeah. I know Kevin Fannin was teaching classes, and there was somebody else, and I I don't remember his name. I don't know him, so yeah, sorry, a, other person. Jason Coates was there also doing some uh, classes. Oh, uh, maybe that's who it was. Yeah, that Kevin, cloak. Kevin Fannin was like pretty much the only miniature painter there this year, pretty much. It was interesting because he was like, oh, my class is sold out. I'm happy. He's like, I'm the only one there, but I'm happy. I'm like, oh, good. Oh, that's sort of an orangey red then. Does it really look too red to you? I'm assuming he's painting Yondu. Is it supposed to be more brownie red? Like burgundy? Or maroon? You'd think I would know because I just watched that. I'm also not 100% sure. That's my guess. I'm waiting for him to confirm. <laughs> oh, wait. What is this that you're putting together, Gonzo? This is the other um, Colossal from the Infernals. Uh, oh, the one okay. that we like the most. The one that we like. Which one I'll be using. It's the guy with the that has like the big gaping claws or whatever kind of hard to see but it's pinchy yeah well it's not the pinchy one is this is the ranged version of them but yeah so i'm putting together him ranged version what does he shoot uh spitballs he shoots really nasty fire demon fire i don't know what it's called hellfire hellfire brimstone giant chickens <laughs> he shoots giant chickens. Is that like Foghorn Leghorn? Yes. I say, I say, those guns will cluck you up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. That's all you got. I mean, Meanwhile, El Marshall is all Raza Frasa, which is like my favorite nonsense curse word from Yosemite Sam. Yes. I say that all the time, so that's pretty awesome. All right, so uh, what's next on our agenda? Oh, yeah, you wanted to. Uh, yeah. I don't know about the Gen Con one. So you have to, or not Gen Con, the GW thing. What happened with GW this week? I Well, apparently know. someone leaked what. I don't remember if it ended up being actually their NDA or their actual NDA. Uh huh. Or not their actual NDA. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is Yondu. There you go. There's the source pick, Kathy. Ooh, okay. But, uh, uh, and everyone was upset because of some of the wording on it. Uh, to which I want to say, obviously you motherfuckers have never seen an NDA before. So, like, the NDA they send to, like, testers or something like that? Yeah, people who get product early. And, yeah. yes, it basically says you can't just shit all over our product. Yeah. Shock of shocks. Yeah. It does not say... They can't give a fair and balanced review. They cannot. That's not say they cannot give constructive criticism. It just says basically you can't shit all over our products. Why are you fucking shocked? You, you this get is that not early. new. They, they do that with video games too. They're like, okay, we'll exactly. give you a thing. We'll give you the early copy of it. Let us know. Let us say, and then let us do something. And then when it's live, then you can shit on it if you want to. But you can't shit when, on when, it before. Correct. Once it's live, you can you can you can say whatever you want. But while you're reviewing it as a pre copy, you have to be constructive. Correct. Well, here's a spoiler for all these people who are in, who are going to be reviewing shit. You should fucking be constructive, anyways. Yeah. I don't want to hear this is shit. It was terrible. I don't like it. Like, okay, that doesn't help me know if I'll like it or not because I'm not you, motherfucker. Yeah, you sh you should give me why you don't like it. What is it that needs to be done? Is and, it is it something that can be fixed before it goes live, or yeah. is this something that's like, this is the game, this is how it works, whether you like it or not? And they're all worried about like, oh, well, they're just gonna you know sugarcoat all this stuff. Like, look, these people make their own decisions of whether they want to sign that NDA or not. It's not like right. they have to. You <laughs> yeah, but wait, this is a piece of shit just for shit's sake. I mean, there've been products like that, but if you're getting it early, they don't want to hear you say that. It's, I. I it just pisses me off that people are getting upset about this shit. You're not a reviewer. You've never probably looked at a real fucking contract of just about any sort in your ever in your fucking life. Just fucking 
Get over yourselves. I, I'm going to say this out there, and I apologize to everyone who disagrees. I don't know what it was, how, how good it was in the past versus other communities, because I've very rarely been in two gaming communities at once as far as tabletop games. But the GW community is fucking toxic and terrible and needs to get the fuck over themselves. That's... Like, seriously. Yeah, that... Get over yourselves. Like, yes, GW does terrible things. They're a fucking company. They're to make money. Like, it's not like they're killing puppies. You know? Like, oh my god, they're doing all this... To, yeah, get this just in. Who fucking knew? They're packaging things in a way that's going to make them more money and make you want to buy more. Shock of shocks. That's it's not new. That's... It's always been like that. I don't know why you're getting upset. And like, every, oh, company, every company does that. Every company is trying to make money. Oh, man. Remember when Privateer Press sold their units at like five and then you had to buy the extra pack of three or whatever I mean, the, yes. the game, oh, people were like went all off on that and i was like okay everybody mm -hmm. else does that that's like that was like the standard norm at the time was yeah to sell the I mean, minimum yeah. of the unit and then you bought you know what if you wanted to buy the maximum mm -hmm. you went and bought the little pack and i remember the shit storm of that cause at one point and but I'm like, yeah that and then their whole um uh what is it Try to remember the other, the the big big one. Trying to get the words together for it, um, and their big thing about you know fan stuff, about protecting their uh, their intellectual intellectual property. Hey, guess what? They fucking have to do that. Yeah. Like, get over yourselves. Like, the only person who got like an actual strike turns out it was a mistake, and the GW guys fixed it quickly. Like, also remember all this shit is totally in their fucking favor because that's how laws work right now all laws are for the company first and the non-safety related are for the company first and for the consumer third at best and just get over it they have all the power there's no reason for them not to let the automated stuff go after stuff you know and and get there there was a guy on twitter who was pissed moaning and whining because something on his etsy store got you know, GW is basically like an automated thing. So basically, yeah, you can't do this. And it's because he used the fucking word Warhammer in the description. Well, <laughs> guess what? You are now causing doubt in people's minds whether or not it is an actual Warhammer thing or not. Perfectly within their rights. Is it that... shitty? Yes. But blame the fucking companies that let them do that. It's... That happened to me way, way back when I first started putting stuff on eBay. In my title... In my title of a Reaper miniature, I put Warhammer, and they took down my listing. And but at least, at least they were kind enough. Their legal people were kind enough to respond to my. I don't know why this was taken down. Can you explain it to me so that I don't make this mistake again? And they explained it to me, and that was helpful. And I never yes. made that mistake again. Yes, there's too much automation, not enough a live person looking at shit and going, message to a person, hey, your title has this in it, please don't do that again. Which I think is the absolute bare minimum we should look for, but remember, the laws are in their favor, they're going to do things. So, let's not all get bent out of shape about shit that's just little shit like that. You know, keep in mind, it, it, the laws are that way, that's who they're made for. Don't blame GW for them doing what a company does. They have to protect their intellectual property, whether you like yes. it or not. You know, and I didn't see anything wrong with them saying to me, uh, we don't want people misrepresent misrepresenting our product by using the words like Warhammer in it when it's not a Warhammer product. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. Yeah. That was absolutely fair, and I totally understood it. Because the early days of eBay, they thing. would just put whatever you put whatever tag you wanted to get the the hits you wanted in there. And you know, it is what it is. I don't get upset about that stuff. I mean, save the upsetness for the real shit that you should get upset about. Should you get upset that they're selling boxes in a shitty, shitty manner and don't care if scalpers buy up all the copies so that they they get to sell them on eBay for two hundred percent of this retail price? Begin with sure, get upset about that. 
But they're going to do what they're going to do. They're making their sales. They don't give a shit. You vote with your dollar, and people were like, it doesn't matter. Like, uh, what was the other one? Because, oh my god, there's so much news this week. Um, uh, Paizo and Pathfinder. I don't know if you guys heard about that. Mm-hmm. Long story short. Spoiler, they're horrible potentially. This just in. <laughs> Sexist and potentially racist. Who fucking knew? In a white orient in a white uh, centric business, there are people who might be both. This just in. I didn't hear about that one. No, you, we no. like to think that our gaming companies are immune to this, but they're just like any other companies. They're people, and people have terrible morals sometimes. Uh, I, one of my buddies, uh, Rogue Sparrow Gaming, did a whole uh, uh, Twitch stream about this earlier in the week that since I had nothing else to do, I jumped in and listened to him for a bit. Um, familiarized myself a tiny bit with it. And yeah, just as then, they're, they're terrible. So much like Blizzard, they will not be getting my money. Were they going to get my money anyways? Probably not. The odds of me not playing D&D or a better game system and playing Pathfinder 2, which seems like it'd be fine. You know, no disparaging marks against their system. It seems like it'd be fine, but I would either go with the big dog or something that was exactly what I wanted. Yeah, because Pathfinder but actually case, was the, the leader in D&D for a while because of well, the core because they Because they were... D&D 375 and people didn't like 4th edition because yeah. uh, they don't know how to actually run games yeah. and I'm going to stick with that statement if you're offended <laughs> by that statement I'm sorry not really Yeah, I remember when Pathfinder was the shit to play instead of d and I never played 4th we just, we just kept playing 3.5 we it, didn't feel the need to change because you didn't have to we and liked it, our you know, stuff we were doing, our, our GM was familiar with it. He didn't oh, yeah. have to buy new stuff and learn a new rule set or anything. And that was fine. But I'm here to tell you, 4th Edition was a very good game for people who know how... God, this sounds really terrible and elitist, and I hate to make it sound like this. It's not that, because anyone could do it. It's not about... <laughs> oh, Bowie, fuck you. <laughs> but it's, it's not about that. It's about It was a really good game if you fucking know how to role play. If you don't actually need the book to tell you all little things, it's like, well, the book doesn't tell me how to role play. Well, no fucking shit, jackass. You should know how to do that to begin with. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to change systems when it comes out. It was good for some, bad for others. The thing I hate about it, and this may be a little bit of RPG elitism, is that rather than innovating, they just went back to fuck to their fucking earlier stuff and keep going, which is fine. Some people, that's what they want. They want the comfortable blanket. Sure. But I, I think it's a terrible. I think we're hurting ourselves and the role playing industry because D and D is the brand name. Everyone knows D and D. Everyone plays D and D, like to the point where I've heard people just not play other games because it's not D and D. And with D and D not innovating their fucking rules, it's gonna hurt the gaming industry, the role playing industry. And it's fine if D and D's out there doing what it's doing, but we, we need to make sure other people hear about other games. If people are just talking about D&D, you need to get them talking about other games, too. Because D&D is not the end-all, be-all. We can talk about other games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got plenty of games. We are, to we are all playing other games besides D&D right now. But we need to do it with like new... It's funny. I have, my, I have my D&D shirt on right now. No. But... <laughs> <laughs> Coincidentally. But, but, yeah, I'm really enjoying playing Worlds Without Number. Mm-hmm. Uh, I never played Stars Without Number, uh, but I'm 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 just getting the hang of the mechanic. Just just getting the hang of it. And same thing with Thirsty Sword Lesbians, which mm-hmm. is the I think a Plaid Hat Games uh, uh, product. Yeah, but we we need to look. We need to make sure that people that the newer people know to look for these games because for what D and D did. To not be terrible. And it's not really terrible, but it's only terrible given the circumstances, which is not Wizards of the Coast's fault. As a company trying to make money, they saw people were upset that they went so far away from, like, it was a huge change. Yeah, They went so far away from it that they're like, let's go back to it. Because we want our people back. And they got their people back. And, I mean, that's what a company does. And then but, And then you get, um, you know, the lightning in the bottle of... Uh, God, what's that Twitch stream that did the D&D critical that everyone role. loves? Critical Role. Sure, Critical Role. 
and the lightning in the battle critical role. We need people like that to make sure everyone knows there's more than just D and D because now everyone's just D and D and it fucking really, really annoys me. It's a very wow. comfortable setting. I think that's what it is, is it's very comfortable for people and very easy, which there well, there's a lot. It's nostalgia in some ways, like yeah. you said, comfortable and easy, but the newer players don't realize there are other games. And there might be other games to play. So it ends up, you know, through no fault of Watsy, it ends up being a horrible, let's say a horrible circumstance. Not to throw a fault at anyone. It's not Critical Role's fault. No. It's not Watsy's fault. It's not even the player's fault. It's just a horrible situation that we need well, to work on. but new players, they're going to they're gonna develop their, their like, for role-playing games, for D&D. And then, then they're going to start discovering that there are more other ones and they're going to get excited about that. So in that respect, I'm not too worried about, you know, the new gamers not realizing that there's anything besides D&D. Because I didn't when I when I first started playing D&D and when I joined the, the Adventures Gaming Club at the local community college <laughs> when I was like 18... You know, I didn't realize that. And they had a ton of different games that these people were playing. Mm -hmm. When I joined, yes, they were playing a D&D campaign, but they were playing a ton of other games. And I had no idea that those were out there. And it was amazing. Yeah. And, and like Center Voters said, Critical Role has done other rule sets now, which is good. Like, it's not all about there. So, But it's one of those things that this whole circumstance gets to. There's a lot of that going on. But back to, you know, the point of this, which I've gotten sort of far afield from, is that member, if you don't like what a company's doing, vote with your dollars. Correct. I mean, yep. Paizo basically said that we only listen to people who spend money on our products. So if you don't spend money on our products, we don't care. It wasn't quite so blunt, but that's exactly what they said. In which case, I'm double like, fuck you and you're not going to get my money. You likely weren't anyway, so you're not losing anything technically. Yeah. But vote with your dollars. If you don't like what a company is doing, don't buy their products. You know, that that's the end of it. It works. They'll say it doesn't work. People will tell you you're not doing anything, just hurting yourself. No, you're sticking to your fucking guns, and it does hurt them. Those are dollars they're not getting. Your game store is gonna, still going to get those dollars. They're not hurt because you're going to spend that disposable income on something else. Because there's a million other games out there that are just as fun as whatever it is you're playing. Yep, and there's more coming out all the time. I, I randomly will back inexpensive role-playing games on Kickstarter because it looks interesting. Yep. Maybe maybe I, I like their elevator pitch. There's one that's supposed to be this very cinematic role-playing game. I'm like, you know what? I like your elevator pitch. You're, you're, you're not asking for a lot of money. Boom. Let's go. Yeah. I mean, as it stands right now, the current games that I like are Feng Shui, which I am supporting because they have... Uh, they have this subscription service where you get all of their supplements when they come out. But basically you have to promise you're going to buy them so they know they're going to make sell them, which is great. So I'm willing to promise them a little bit of money. They've got they've delivered two already and they've got like four more in the works. I'm super happy. You know? I like look at little stuff. But that between that and uh uh Genesis, which hasn't been doing much recently, but I really like that game system. I like the you know? system also. It's very, very flexible. It, there's a lot of play. There's a lot of things you can do with it, I think. Uh, a good a good GM can do amazing things with it. Yeah. Or play a homebrew. Exactly, Xander Ford. You can take rules from so many different games and make something better. That's what you do. In fact, there's a lot of uh, game systems that have amazing backstory and background and source books. Source books without number, and you can just take them and play them in any other game system. Yes, I'm talking directly about playing books again because fuck their game system. <laughs> like Rifts. You want to play Rifts? Do it Savage Worlds or make your own game system. There are oh, so many good things out there. I like Savage And if you don't know, find someone who knows. Ask me, ask Gon, just, just throw us a question on, on Facebook or Twitter or something. We will help you. I mean, you're talking to the guy who just for the shit of it made. Robotech role-playing game rules for the hero system, aka champions, because I was bored and wanted to do something. Just got all the raw data of, hey, you know, this is supposed to do this, and just made it all up, then made sure it worked. It's 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 time intensive, but man, it's kind of enjoyable to a point. 
But I'm ranting again, aren't I? <laughs> it's okay. It's a good rant. Yes. Yeah, because so. there's a lot of game systems I like to play other than D&D. Like, I'm a huge Earthdawn okay. fan. I've talked about that, and I will play that anytime I can get someone to play it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and don't despair. Don't like, like disparaging D&D. I may not like where they're going, but that's not to say if I get a group together and they're interested in playing um, the uh, Dungeons and, and Doggos uh, supplements that I'm not going to just fucking run those. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if it has to be d and I'm fine with that. I'm actually very looking forward to that or, you know, or running Feng Shui again or whatever we end up doing as soon as we're done. Uh, Kathy will understand this. We're waiting for the local Ren Fair to get done before we uh, look at gaming again, since at least one person, one of our normal gamers is in that. Okay. <laughs> you know how hard it is to get them on a Saturday after work in the Ren Fair? And oh, God. Then, yeah. yeah, because you have to go to dinner afterwards. You can't just... And you're exhausted. It's a long day. Yes, it is a long day. So we're working on that. But so there you go. Vote with your vote with your dollars. They'll try and tell you it doesn't work. It fucking does. If you don't like what the company's doing, you don't have to buy their stuff. Yeah. What time is it? Uh, almost time. Um, one of the last things that we wanted, wanted to talk about was uh, the Asthma Day news that came out um, that they're trying to sell their company. It's, all it's, the time. That's you know, it's about all the time. Hash, all the time. Hashtag news that doesn't affect us at all. Yeah. Really oh, does. <clears throat> Some, well, part of that news does because one of the things they said in that was uh, they're raising the product cost on everything by like 20%. Minus, Everybody's raising the product cost on everything. Yeah. Minus right Marvel now. Crisis. Marvel Crisis is not getting a price increased on their, their thing they sent out, but everybody else is. Yeah, I mean, the whole world has changed since all that stuff came out. Marvel's, I mean, their prices are probably already in line with... Yes, a lot of the, all the ones that they hadn't doing. raised, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> that, that was something somebody asked if the Marvel was going to go up, and I was like, everybody was looking at everything, and it said... And everything that was on there was not Marvel Crisis Protocol. Haha, ha, L. Marshall. That is exactly what I said the other day when somebody asked me about that. Non-news... Investor groups looking to make money wants to sell to a different investor group that wants to make money. That is pretty much exactly, it's what, exactly I said what it the is. other day. Yeah, and and Leisure had asked uh, privately, uh, not that it was a private conversation, but but it, to me directly, if that was the price raise was to make it more enticing. It is not Legionnaires. It is a hundred percent not. It's all it about is, shipping and yeah, everything supply. costs more. Getting your stuff to be printed by those Chinese uh, printers costs more now because between the shipping and, and getting to make sure you're in the point and, and queue where you want to be, it all costs more. This is just kickback. They're kicking their extra prices down the line because this stuff's not making the money it needs to at that price point. I knew it was going to happen because, honestly, the the Star Wars stuff when it came out was super well-priced. Like, it was yeah. inexpensive compared to other games. Not just compared to GW, compared to like Infinity or any of those other ones, the price to make a force was significantly cheaper. And they're just, and it's probably because FFG wasn't looking at that. They're like, we need to make X money. And this is probably things are more expensive and we need to be priced relatively competitively within the market. You know, you know, if, you, if you're charging, you know, 20 bucks for your squad and other and that same. Hey, big night that same amount of your army from another uh, game costs 50 bucks. You're leaving money on the table as far as a company is concerned. Nothing with anything. When some prices increase, like we're going to increase it. We'll bump it a little extra because we were already leaving money on the table. So let's pop it up. So even if they go to $35, that's filling up all the gaps for the money and keeping it still cheaper than the big dog. Because let's be honest, they're still cheaper than in GW. Anyways, do you have anything else for me to rant on, Gonzo? Oh, shit. No, I'm on I, a roll uh, here. I did see. <laughs> um, I saw an ad for a game called Verge of War, a uh, miniature game, um, and stuff. And I, I saw that, and I was like, "Ooh!" So I checked that out. I don't know if I'll buy any miniatures. I don't think it's going to be, you know, a game worth playing, but they did have some cool pirate minute, pirate space pirates. And I was like, man, I think I just want to buy the space pirates just as a space pirates. Um, miniatures were really cool. Uh, I didn't get a chance to look at that, but I just like, oh, I almost pulled the triggers on just the, 
the the space pirate miniatures because like they're wearing you know pirate hats and pirate outfits and giant robots. What would be even cooler is if they looked like the ice pirates. <laughs> you Thanks, would... Mo's Magic. But did they have space herpes? He asked. <laughs> did they have a robot that was painted black because they wanted it to be perfect? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it looks it looks fine. I would not say it grabs me looking at the space pirates. They are models. They exist. There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing super enticing enticing about them. Yeah, I just thought they were cool looking miniatures. I was like, oh, those look cool to me. Uh, hard to tell. I mean, if you could find out how much it costs to uh, how much of an army these uh, faction boxes are for 130 to like 170 bucks, that'd be more enticing to know. So you know how much it is. I like the little skiff thing the pirates have. That's cool. Um, but other than that, the models are they're, they're fine. Yeah, they're, they're not. There's there's nothing special about them. They did do something really cool that I like that I thought was interesting is you can buy the models as is, um, the way they are and everything else. So they got you know the the limited pose abilities, or you could spend a little extra money and have like super poseable miniatures and like they give you like the fingers off the hands and all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, that's a little bit more than what I would deal with, but. I thought that was an interesting concept, which I'm sure it cost a whole lot more to, you know, have that fully eh. posable thing. But I, to me, I would just buy the normal stuff and not worry about it. Eh. I don't know about the rules or anything. I just like the models. Uh, I like them. And they're actually pretty big models. Yeah, they're, they're, Someone did a like picture said, comparison between like GW and a bunch of other this stuff, and they're much bigger. So. Oh, I, are you guys ready for another rant? Uh, which one is it? <laughs> Uh, so their dice. Oh, I hate custom dice like that. They're fucking Q Workshop dice again. Yeah. Fucking why do you keep using Q Workshop dice? They are fucking shit. Yeah. They are absolutely the least impressive dice out there. Like some of them cool. They get cool things and all. And they might be exactly what you want. Especially if you're using them for, uh, you know, for your role playing game. But for a miniatures game, they're just not good yeah. at least these numbers are clearly readable so oh, they're for a okay miniatures game? Yeah, yeah i would agree with that oh yeah for it's it's I like if it's a role-playing role game stuff, yeah but yeah because they because they add the right character to your character you know and for a miniatures he, game they're hard to read yeah it's like when when Prefter press used them i was like yeah fuck out on that gw dice even though they fucking put the skulls on the ones rather than the the funny icon on the the, the one rather than the six is I'll take them because at least they look cool. Except for the squig dice, which were a little fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. And, those and things bouncy. Are, every time I've seen the key workshop stuff, the like paint rubs off and they just... I never had that problem. Yeah, no, I, I never heard any quality a... issues, but I just don't... I had quality don't issues. like them as dice. They're all the little designs on them. Uh, they, they can be hard to read. Yeah. Uh-huh. Which I'm fine with in a role-playing game because I, I, this is going to sound really horrible and take it for exactly what it means. In a role-playing game, I have more trust that they're not going to fudge. People aren't going to fudge their dice. Yeah. And I also have less of a give a shit if they do fudge their dice. I don't care. In a miniatures game, you know, a quick read of a, like 50 dice if you're playing GW, that you, you could make mistakes. It's okay. So, is what it is. But yeah. Q workshop dice, yikes. So, uh, to finish that off before we go into media section, uh, in their Kickstarter, uh, Battletech has dice, and they were hit or miss quality wise. Their Chinese uh, printers didn't do necessarily a great job in all of them, but they're doing stuff for people who got ones that weren't great. I've got mine, they're perfectly fine. They're six sided with pips. I fucking love it. Um, you know, I would prefer, prefer those with some slight quality issues compared to Q-Workshop dice any day of the week. Doubly on Sunday, when I can rant about it. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's the media section. And I 100% guarantee no rants. Uh, false. I'm totally going to rant about at least two things. Uh -oh. Excellent. Oh, oh, I got rants, son. I got rants. <laughs> All right, I, just wanted to clip I didn't even watch off. a fucking thing this week, and I got rants. Oh, my God. Okay. Ah. Shit. Not a damn thing. 
and I got all sorts of rants. Where would you like to start? Actually, uh, I know where we should start. In the media screen? Yes. The media screen? We do. I, I wait with bated breath. Okay. That's the media screen. <laughs> Just nice and clean. I do like the scene change. That's cool. Legit. My like stinger. It. All right. So let's start with uh, uh, What If. Uh, I haven't watched the last two episodes. Do you know why? No. Because after three downer fucking episodes in a row, I've realized I don't fucking want to. <laughs> and that's a terrible mistake that, that Disney has made in the current environment to have three downer episodes in a row especially when it ended with a zombie episode which not only being a downer is a fucking subject matter i hate but yeah. that's not their fault that's a me problem not a them problem yeah. but having three downers in a row even if the doctor strange one i thought was very good and the uh one before it was interesting not necessarily as good the weaker episode and then yeah, the zombie yeah. one which i thought was terrible because i fucking hate zombies um I'm oh. with you on that one, 100. percent One second here. Uh, so um, we're kind of in agreement on all three of them. Yeah. But I did watch these these, these last two. Um, so that's why I haven't watched them. I will watch them, but I don't. You you have to space them better. They should have been Captain Carter downer episode. Uh. The what if T'Challa was Star Lord downer episode? You could have done a second downer episode in a row, but you need to space them better. I, uh, Someone's asking me a question, and, I, and I'm going to talk about it later in the stream, so I want to jump in the stream. Yeah, but I yeah, watched so the new what if, and this one, the title is you know what if Thor was the you know an only kid, only child type thing, pretty okay. much. Um, not, not spoiling it, but it was just okay. Uh, yeah. it was like, why? It was like, there was, it was like, it wasn't really worth an, a what if type thing, in my opinion. Yeah. Mediocre. Yeah. Mediocre. It, it, but yeah. It, it gets the 2.5 from me because Ooh. it was just, it was just, eh. it, it wasn't a downer. No, it was that's, not a downer. But it was mediocre. And I heard, the, the, that's also the thing is there's been no buzz about these last couple episodes. No. The zombies episode, at least there was buzz about it. There's no buzz. And I think that's going to hurt them more than anything. I think they, they they played their really big cards too early. They should have spaced them better. Um, the other one? I don't even remember. Killmonger? Yeah, the other one for that was oh. Killmonger. Yeah. I heard solid things about that one. I said, like I said, I haven't watched it. Bane and I haven't had a chance to watch them. We usually watch them together over a dinner or something. We just, It's been crazy. And... I, you know, like I said, no buzz. And after a couple downers in a row, I really didn't care. So that's why I'm not. It's good to hear what your guys' thoughts are. I'll, I'll watch them, of course, and we can talk about them. But, you know, it, it's just interesting to, to be constructive, as I think they should have spaced them out better. But I'm not sure they're thinking that far ahead. They're like, content, go! Yes. Yeah, there was there was not a lot of... This one was just like, why? What was the purpose of it? Type thing. I think that's coming to a head. I think it's going to play play a part later, but we'll see. Well, I know that we're getting pretty soon. We're getting the uh, Black Widow on Disney Plus and um, October something soon. Let me second. I'll find it. I sent the message to uh, not Brushhead Dave about it because we were talking about it at dinner or lunch one Sunday. Yeah, and then also uh, the... Uh, October 6th. Yeah, I know it was coming up, but like November 11th is uh, the newest Marvel movie. What is it called? Um, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi, yeah. That's when we're getting that one. Like, yeah, like, November apparently that's really well with theater, so good. Yeah. Um, but, you know what? For a second rant, <laughs> oh, I'm off. I'm off the chain. I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys get a word yeah. in here in the moment, but... To everyone who is super upset with Black Widow because you love the beloved Marvel villain Taskmaster. These are exact words <laughs> someone said on my fucking Twitter. Get the fuck over yourself. He is a tertiary villain at the absolute best, and they didn't do him how you liked. It's fucking okay. History is rife with 
media that's been adapted from one source to the other, and they didn't get a fucking character right. Ask Lord of the Rings fans about Glorfindel. <laughs> get over yourself. You don't have to post about it on a fucking daily basis. No one fucking cares that much, least of all Disney. Proceed. <laughs> Kathy, <laughs> did you, I only have a few this week. Uh, what? Yeah, and it's mostly just watching and catching up with shows that I... Uh, needed to catch up on um like i only got like three or so so and we already covered one which is what if i watched a an interesting movie yesterday called love and friendship which is sounds up i had it it's british it's a british movie it and uh up. it's based on a jane austen novel oh. called Ouch. lady susan so oh. I knew it was going to be this sort of Regency, you know, Jane Austen style of movie, uh, but it's a comedy. And I don't know, I don't know if people who are unfamiliar with Jane Austen would understand the comedy of it at all. Or maybe it's just like a, a British thing, British humor or something, but I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny as hell because I've read a bunch of Jane Austen. I never read the Lady Susan epistolary novel, but uh, I have read several other Jane Austens and uh, it was, I had to pay attention just like when I first started reading Jane Austen, there is a, there's a way that sentences are constructed and archaic words that are used so you really have to pay attention fair enough so so i had to really pay attention to what was being said to 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 make sense of things but it it was so very very jane austen and yet so very much a a comedy i thought that was really well done as far as you know, meshing those two things together. But I think you need to be familiar with Regency uh, literature so to really it, find the humor in it. Would you say that this is one that if you hear the elevator pitch and think you're going to like it, you should watch it. But if you don't think you're going to like it, you should probably skip? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But that. if you like Jane Austen, watch this. If you if you have enjoyed Jane Austen novels in the past, you'll find this amusing. Awesome. Space herpes? Question mark. I don't know. I think I would I would say one, but only because you have to pay. But that's just me. No, maybe I mean, none. It was sometimes really some well movie done. that you have to tape pay undue attention to is worth one if it's supposed to be light fair and you have to pay a lot of attention sometimes that's a pain yeah so it's maybe one also okay. the wigs were a little it's funny to to notice this but the wigs seemed a little much obviously wigs okay <laughs> that, yeah. that is legitimately a, that's a legitimate uh, criticism absolutely but it, it it also added an element of camp to it that that made it seem more uh, theatrical. Put I you guess. in the right mindset for the humor. Yeah, rather than you know cinematic. Fair enough. Uh, setting the right tone for your movie is important. So yeah, I enjoyed it, and yeah, Jane Austen. If you like her, you'll like it. Um, one of the things I watched this week was um, a show that came on Netflix called The Squid Game. Uh, the Squid Game is a Korean uh, TV show. Uh, I kind of hope it gets another season, but I have no clue. Uh, made for Netflix. It is about a group of people that are down on their luck financially, don't have their own money, and they kind of sell their body rights away to play in games that can get them killed type thing so you fail at the game you die uh but there's only one winner supposedly there's only one winner at the end and they get a buttload of money um pretty dark show um but it's got like this good moral building up scene all through it 
uh, because people are like, oh, we found out that this is about people dying. Like if you lose, you're killed, you know, type thing. And goes into a lot of moral clauses and stuff like that based on what's happening. Um, they do have it dubbed or subtitled. Uh, <laughs> uh, it is. It was actually pretty decent. I actually kind of liked it a lot. I wanted to see the ending. The characters start growing on you. You start liking it. And there's this old man in there that is hilarious as shit um, type thing. But overall, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It is pretty dark, though, so, you know, I would, you know, caution about that uh, if you're going to watch it, <laughs> because it is about people, you know, selling their bodies so they can make money, and in a contest where you lose, you die, type thing, and, uh, but it has a lot of good moral concepts in there about what people do for, you know, XYZ type stuff, so, I enjoyed it, I give it, like, maybe one space herpes, I go one space herpes, on it because it's just kind of a it, it's pretty dark and there's a bit in there you're like mm, ooh you just feel bad about uh, but I enjoyed everything really it's done really well acted really well um, all the effects were really cool so I enjoyed it I had a good time with it John all right pushing that they button they released the, yeah <laughs> they released uh, uh, like some scenes and the um. Intro for Netflix's Cowboy Bebop. It looks very good. It, it, it looks like they just copied straight the, you know, the intro is pretty it's, much straight the intro to the cartoon. Yeah, very similar to it, which is cool because it keeps a familiarity. But why the fuck did all this negativity about it come from? It looks spot fucking on. What the fuck is wrong with you people? Because it's nostalgia. No, it's like, oh, you know, why am I going to watch a, a live action of something that's, you know, still perfectly watchable as animated? I don't know, fucking ask Disney with every single fucking <laughs> live action version of their fucking animated series. It's yeah. what you do. Who says they're not going to bring some new episodes to you? Not just all going to be remakes, the ones that are in fucking animated series. You don't fucking know yet because it's not out. Yeah. Once their season is out and if they're going to like put it all at once or, you know, Fridays or whatever... I'll watch they're gonna, it. They're going to do it on a certain day. That's that's the way. You can't it should. do it another way. But I don't know. And once they do that and I get to watch an episode, and then I'll make my decision on it. I would also want to know where Ed is. Um, they don't have to have Ed in the first season. Correct. Ed wasn't in the first seven episodes, so it'll be cool. Yeah. Uh, they did show Ayn, so that's the reason why I was like, <laughs> Ed's in there somewhere, hopefully. Um, well, so you mean you remember Ayn came before Ed. Yeah. Ayn's episode two, son. Is it really? It's been so long. Yeah. I mean, it's one of my favorite. I don't remember when Ayn came in, but I, you know, when you see Ayn and uh, Ed, you see Ayn, you picture Ed a lot. So, I mean, that's how it, because I mean. Uh, Mose, I hope you're joking and you don't, you, do you know what Cubby Bop is? When you get do the you... pop, you get Ayn and Ed together, but no. Um, yeah, I, so... I'm looking forward to it. I'm optimistic. Uh, the people that are playing the Carol roles, I it don't have any problem with it. looks great. Yeah. So so the things I've seen, yeah, it is episode two, Legionnaires. I, I, even though I haven't watched it in a while because I loaned it to El Marshall before the lockdown so he and his son could watch, uh, I, I still remember it all. Um, I really like the way everything it, <laughs> Tank is the intro and Jet is going to sigh. I'm certain of that, Legionnaires. We're good. Um, you always got bored watching it, Big Night. You were dead to me. Dead to me. I will unironically un say I think Cowboy Bop is one of the greatest animes ever made. Yes. Unironically. I have never seen it. It's amazing. Kathy, the you music were in is, for a treat. The music is incredible. The music is like the yeah, shit. Yeah, Yoko Kano is great, but... Yeah. Mo, you never made a second episode? Oh my god, what is wrong with people? You're killing me. But anyways. You'll watch on Netflix or you won't. It doesn't matter. Enjoy, enjoy or not to your heart's content. Um, I enjoyed it. But people are so upset. Like, so Faye is not dressed like Faye. She's right. not in the super duper short skirt, sh uh, short, short shorts and like the super tight, barely covers anything top because that wouldn't be fucking appropriate for live action. And someone's like, well, look, this cosplay you can do it right with like 10 bucks. And, you know, then the, you know, the multi million dollar series can't get it right. And I'm like, 
you do understand you have to adapt some things so it doesn't fucking work, right? <laughs> do you get upset when the super superhero costumes are not made from sucking spandex? Fucking get it. What is wrong with people? God, yeah. I know that there was a big complaint about her costume, and I was like, you got to get over it. It looks like Faye. I mean, I, I we'll put Man Faye in there if you want that instead, and just do oh, that. I don't want to see Man Faye ever again, <laughs> ever, ever. Yeah, but the I point mean, is, for for all the people who are complaining, and it is the same group of people, same yes kind of people who are complaining about not getting like Taskmaster right. They're bitching when all these characters look spot on. They're like, well, Jet's black. Who fucking cares? He was a darker skinned dude. It's fine. Fucking Christ. Yeah, it, there, in no part of his story of Jet does it say that he has to be white. I would nope. be understandable if you're like, you're doing Pocahontas and you cast a white girl. That's a different story. Or but, if you do Ghost in the Shell and you cast a white actress, because apparently that's a problem. Yeah. I don't the... necessarily agree with that, but it doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. There are times when it doesn't matter what it is. There are times it does. Casting Johnny Depp as Tonto, not the best idea. <laughs> sure, he's got Indian blood. I have fucking Indian blood. That doesn't mean I should be fucking Tonto. Yeah. I mean, it looks entertaining to me. It looks um, great. The characters look spot on. Um, I'm kind of... I, I, I'm waiting to see what happens because we don't know what they're going to follow story wise. I hope they follow the basics of the story of, you know, Jet and all them. It about looks like the first be. couple episodes are going to be the same. I, I saw what looked like the first episode being similar, mm-hmm. uh, which is good because it's a good intro. And then the second episode, which is where they get on, looks like there's some parts from that might be from that. I, I'm happy with them starting off yes, the do. same to a point and then going crazy yeah it was on uh, it was on youtube um they have the intro it's it's great like and i am perfectly happy with people like big knight or Moe's who who thought it was boring or just lost interest that's perfectly fine not everything's for everyone but you're not out there shitting on it which is good these people are shitting on it sight unseen like i hope they don't fuck it up like they fucked up x y and z like does it take work to be that negative because you know what I'm a slightly negative dude sometimes, and that's way more negative than me. Yeah. I hear all this shit. I'm like, oh, look at that. I, you know what? I don't care. It's, it doesn't affect my life in any way, shape, or form. That is good, bad, or fucking indifferent. If I'm not going to watch it, fuck do I care. And if I'm going to watch it, I'm going to fucking watch it regardless. Yeah, I mean, there's a difference between saying I hope they don't fuck it up because I, I'm a passion for this and I want it to do good. Instead of saying I hope they don't fuck it up because you're a fucking fanboy that can't get over any changes that go against anything. Or you're, or you're like, it's still perfectly watchable in the anime. Well, sure it is. Yeah. That's fine. Just watch the anime then. This isn't made for you. Just buy the blue rice. You've got the most perfect version of it that you want. Cool. And then fuck off and don't talk about it again. Yeah, I hope so. I'm, I, I, I'm, I hope it's good. It looks good. I'm excited to see it. It's coming out soon, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, I'm, I'm ready for it. We need some good, need some good TV. Cause I know somebody was complaining. Uh, one of my coworkers was like, I don't know why people aren't watching TV. There's some great stuff to watch on, you know, regular TV. And I went, you mean all the CIA, CSI, FBI, cop drama, you know, Look, bullshit I, stuff. I love NCIS as much as everyone as an next person. And, uh, you know, there's just not much to watch on TV anymore. No. Also, uh, respectfully to everyone who works on those things fuck commercials i don't want to see that shit tons of murder porn out there you're right we've got commercials everywhere facebook has commercials twitter has commercials fucking twitch has commercials youtube has commercials we don't need commercials everywhere like i'm okay like when i watch like what is it called now? Paramount Plus. They they throw a couple ads at the beginning for their own shit, and then you get on, and there's no ads during the entire episode. Cool, awesome, sounds good. Let's go. It's like Witcher. You don't hear me saying anything about the Witcher one way or the other, right? I got no horse in that race. I've got no emotional attachment to that series at all. Will I watch it? Maybe, maybe not. Is it good? Bad? Doesn't make a difference to me. Uh, I. Everyone's enjoying it. That makes me happy because people are enjoying stuff. That's and, good. And it also got a uh, another season out of it before the season came out, so it's already yeah. up to another season. 
it's got a good buzz. I'm pleased that it is good. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, we'll have to find a way for Kathy to watch Cowboy Bebop on anime, which means I might be sending her my DVD copies and then just buy Blu-ray eventually. We shall see. Um, I have Crunchyroll. I could probably, or not Crunchyroll, uh, Funimation. I can give her my account to that too. Uh, well, and so the next thing I probably will start watching, I'm going to start trying to clear itself up as I get time because I haven't watched it much, but I will definitely be watching the entire series of Robotech soon because I have the uh, collection edition on the way since it comes out literally on my fucking birthday. How, how could I not? Nice. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, what else you guys got to watch and talk about? I may not rant about that stuff. Kathy, you got anything? I watched Last Crusade yesterday. Whoa. Indiana Jones? Uh-huh. Oh, I could rant about that, too. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it's it, like, like always. I love, my, I love my Indiana Jones. I love those three movies. Uh, and I already watched Raiders of the Lost Ark a few months ago and uh, Temple, Temple of Doom. Of Doom. So it was time. It was time to uh, to watch the the last one, and yeah, love it, love it. I haven't seen it as often as I've seen the other two, so there were some things I didn't remember about it, which was cool. Yeah, it's a good, fun movie. Enjoy the crap out of it. Oh yeah. The only rant I can make is. Not the fault of anything but the time it came out in. And the time it came out in, adding humor was the way forward. I don't mind the humor. I mind that they made Marcus Brody and Sala fucking comic relief. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, uh, I would have thought Sala... Marcus Brody would have... I mean, it, there's no reason for him to be street smart, but to be just a, a bumbling idiot. No need. It, it was terrible. And he gave no clues to that earlier. He seemed like he's a curator of a, of a museum, you know, and all. He seems fine. You know, he shouldn't be super in his element in the action, but he shouldn't be a fucking moron either. And Sala was a respected businessman and all perfectly competent and seemed to have some smarts and some connections. And then he just becomes another another. You know, quasi comic kind of relief. He's a throwaway in this. Yeah, it's, it's it was, just a it was, thing. It was just like this little cameo appearance, kind of a, hey, we're going to throw Sala in there last second. Fans will love it. And then we're not going to do anything. Yeah, and, and it's not the fault of the movie makers or anything. It is what the times called for. It is a product of its times. So I don't get upset about that. I still think it's perfectly perfectly good enjoyable movie uh i would personally probably give it one space herpy because of those things because yeah other than that it's super fun i do think it's the worst of the first three indiana jones movies just because um i feel that temple of doom as super duper underrated and raiders of the lost ark is fucking perfect but i know i'm in the minority on the temple of doom part but i enjoy temple of doom i love it uh but then i read I read the book of it, which is funny because I, I tried to read the book of Raiders of the Lost Ark and that was really disappointing. It was so <laughs> disappointing, the book, that I didn't even finish it. Huh. Uh, but Did Temple Lucas Temple, write it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. It was so long ago. Uh, but Temple of Doom, the book, adds more to it. It adds more to the story, and it actually probably made me appreciate my next viewings, my next many viewings of Temple of Doom more it, because of that. So much character development in Temple of Doom. Like, Indy develops characters in such good character in that. It was great. Did we I, like I, Willie Scott? No, but she no. wasn't the whole movie. There was a lot more other things going on in it. I so feel I like could just, you know, pass bypass that. She's a disposable damsel in distress, but her background makes her perfect as a damsel in distress. She should not have any competency in anything. She's just a... F oh, big night. I haven't explained... We haven't explained this to you? All right. <laughs> so, our rating scale is based on a movie called Ice Pirates. 
and space herpes, lower is better because obviously you don't want space herpes. No. And this is mostly just to be legally distinct from the podcast we came from, where we also did a higher risk worse scale that involved alcohol. So, but yes, so, I mean, love the Indiana Jones series up to this point. Um, super fun. The early indie stuff with River Phoenix is great. Uh, Sean Connery is super fun as his father. It's just fun, action-adventure type of movie. I love the idea that he's just this uh, this professor who really has nothing to do with fisticuffs or anything on the heels of, you know, all of his James Bond and, and other action roles that he's yes. played. Yes, it's really cool. It also makes a good distinction between him and his son, was sort of points to times, you know, they're pre World War II, uh, post World One, so it's a big different time than it used to be, and it's it's cool to sort of see that if you dig into it. There's a lot to dig into it, and I feel the worst thing that uh, we were robbed from was more Indiana Jones movies, just because Temple of Doom didn't do that well. <laughs> yeah, but super fun. I love those movies, and yes, we're only talking about three of them. I don't hate. The fourth one, by my recollection, but I also have no desire to rewatch it. I have so. never seen it, and I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's probably okay. I don't think you need to. Y- your life will be fulfilled not having seen it. <laughs> and then they're working on a fifth one, apparently, and I'm like, yeah. is he going to be in a wheelchair? Or is it going to be a prequel and doesn't even have Harrison Ford in it at all? Which, you know... The further adventures of Indiana Jones. I would love if they got the guy yeah. who played uh, young Han Solo to uh, play uh, <laughs> young Indiana Jones. That would be <laughs> hilarious. I don't think he's actually the right fit for it, but it would just be but hilarious. it would be funny. It would. You need a good square-jawed guy to be indie. Because you should be that square jaw, you know. I, I love that genre, you know. The, the whole, you know, pre-World War II, you know, globe-trotting adventure stuff. Any of it. Honestly, it's why we like movies like National Treasure that are not obsessively good, but they're fun and interesting. Or The Mummy. I fucking love The Mummy and The Mummy Returns. Oh, not God, so much I the third that. one. The third one's actually not horrific. but And, you know, stuff like that. You know, we need more stuff like that. It is super duper fun. And we more of it. Uh, I have one last one. Um, Star Wars Visions came out this week. Yep. I've watched it. <clears throat> oh, I've ranted about this too. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> so it's like a collection of like nine episodes, eight or nine episodes, <laughs> about 15 to 20 minutes long. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say some of them were really good, and some of them were just like, fuck, this is bad. Um, some of them were just, uh, and boring and some just didn't fit Star Wars universe, but I see why they did it. Um, the oh. first one was kind of a black and white samurai Jedi show, uh, which was really, really good. I liked it. It had a lot of, a lot of fun. Uh, there was one called the ninth Jedi, which was, I think was really good. Uh, overall it was, it was a decent watch. So if I was going to give it like an overall rating for all the episodes, I'd say like, one and a half space herpes. Uh, it's, you know, cause there's such short episodes. You don't feel like you're devoting so much time to a bad episode. Um, but there's some that are just like, yeah, I didn't, I agree. Bowie, the ninth Jedi, I could see that getting a full series. That was very well done. Fall falls right into, you know, the star Wars theme and everything. I really enjoyed it. Um, wow. awesome. I, they're on my list to check out. I will try and check them out. Yeah. You want to hear my rant on this? Which one's this one? Well, apparently, I should stay off Twitter because a lot of idiots are on Twitter <laughs> and somehow they make it across my stream. Someone was bitching that there was too much Japanese influence in the Vision <laughs> series and they need to get the Japanese influence out of Star Wars because that's not Star Wars. You mean that everything's been done by a Japanese studio? <laughs> or how about the fact that Star Wars is literally just a hidden fortress fucking remade in space? Yeah. The reason the original Jedi didn't need to jump around in bullshit is because it is a fucking space samurai movie that's just in Jedi are fucking space samurai. 
for fuck's sake, it's okay if you're critical of something, but fucking know something before you open your fucking trap and spew your word vomit on the fucking Twitter. Yeah, it was, I mean, it wasn't bad. There were just some episodes where I was like, nah, I don't care about this. <laughs> eh. I, mean, I can't delete Twitter because it's content. <laughs> How can I delete Twitter? Look at all the joy I've brought you guys because I've gotten to rant about almost every <laughs> subject we've talked about. But yeah, I, I mean, it's I can just, see all these people bitching and complaining about it. it it's ridiculous. Like, like it's, it, it's just that one was just so nonsensical. It was hilarious. It wasn't like an angry. It's like really fucker. It's like the Taskmaster guys. Like I understand you're upset, but for fuck's sake, give it a rest. Yeah. Uh, Twitter is not bad for my blood pressure. Work is bad for my blood pressure. Twitter is fine. We will do. A, a, we we can do a Kurosawa day, Marshall. I have seen. Seven Samurai, it is a fucking great movie. In fact, I saw Seven Samurai before I saw Magnificent Seven. Uh, it's, I have it's never really, seen it. Oh, God. It's it's so good. Like, to share Mifune like in I that... To watch this. He does such little things that his character is great. It's, it's a good movie. Oh, yeah. And that's pretty much the first episode... It's kind of a, a play on the Kurosawa type stuff, so yeah, yeah, a Hidden Fortress. So like, I'd love to see the original. I mean, I love to see stuff like that, and I have no problem people remaking shit because we sort of, like, honestly, samurai movies and westerns are two sides of the same coin. Yeah. They already are. It's great. Back at a pick night, I will come through the internet. I have seen the Seven Samurai anime, and I didn't have a problem with it because I took it out of content as its own little thing, but I enjoyed Wait. it. Hold on. So you're going to take that anime as its own thing. But when Ready Player One came out, you thought it was the biggest piece of shit ever. That's a oh. whole different ball game because they took out that story. This was a... The, the Seven Samurai anime... I don't know why they called it Seven Samurai just to have that name with it, but it was still a good anime. They could have named it something else, but... Yeah, don't even. I'm not gonna. I, I I totally don't even talk about Ready Player One, and I'm not even even care about Ready Player Two. So. Fair enough. Uh, Bowie Aragon, uh, quick on that. I enjoy it. It's not ostensibly good. I don't care that it's basically just a redo of Star Wars. Who cares? It's relatively enjoyable for its own thing. If you want a B movie version of fantasy Star Wars. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anybody got anything else before we go? No, nothing else to rant about right now. Thank yeah. you. Nothing else to rant about. All right, guys. We appreciate you coming out. We're going to send you to Big Jim Slade Gaming um, and his channel because he's over there playing Valheim. And you can see if he's uh, having any big issues, uh, living or dying by trolls or not. Um, but, guys, please take care of yourself. Please wear your mask. Please stay safe. We want to see you all at HuckCon 2022. Uh, and if you are – oh, now you're going to make us hydrate. And I'm already out of my drink. Hold on. I have plenty Hello. of water still. Cheers, sir. Um, and if you're not, you want to go, you can go to Warfare Weekend and see me in November in about oh, 30 or so days, give or take. Uh, other than that, guys, please be safe. For more than dice, I'm Gonzo. I'm John. I'm Kathy. Good night. I swear, let's have just an all rant less. I can't rant about everything. I mean, actually, I can't. But I should. But I should. Apparently, the outro also comes in the can. That's because the episode's in the can.